Hello guys, so this is Ironic Bonding. Now, like we said in the previous video, bonding is about attaining a stable octet or duplex structure. By the way, the full video is on YouTube, Copy Chemistry on YouTube, so you check it out. Now, for Ionic Bonding, basically, they are, you would eventually form Ionic Compounds. And you can have bonding between elements in group 1 and group 7, elements in group 2 and 7, group 1 and 6, and also group 2 and 6. They'll give rise to ionic compound. This is because the electronegativity difference is far apart. You know, group 1 and group 7, they are the extreme of the periodic table. So you can always give examples. For instance, your sodium chloride is formed from group 1 and 7. From group 2 and group 7, an example would be magnesium chloride. Group 1 and 6, you can have sodium oxide. And then group 2 and 6, you can also have magnesium sulfide or magnesium oxide if you want. So these are examples. Now I'm going to show how bonding happens in sodium chloride so let me take all this off for sodium chloride remember that sodium has 11 electrons and chlorine has 17 sodium having 11 electrons means that you have two electrons in the first shell and then the next one here you have one two three four five six seven eight total is ten and in the last one here you have one and the outermost so it is the outermost electrons here this ones that would participate in bonding now your chlorine has 17 and it is in group 7 so eventually your chlorine would have seven outside one two three four five six seven now, ionic bonding involves a complete transfer of electrons. This is different from covalent bonding because in covalent bonding, you would have sharing of electrons. So you can write that down. But this is ionic bonding, so you're going to have a complete transfer. This one will be completely transferred here. What is the essence of bonding? You have to have a stable octet or duplet. If I should transfer this electron here to this place, eventually the total here will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then this last one that comes in, 8. Okay, and then my sodium, which is this, would have this one here off. So eventually I'll just have the innermost one, which is 8 as well. And now everything is balanced. So that's how it works. Eventually, you would have your sodium ion, which is going to be this, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then you have your chloride anion, because you've gained electron here. So you could choose to draw all the innermost ones, that's fine. But eventually, your outermost will be 8 as well. And that is how it works for this now for magnesium oxide and calcium fluoride you can also try that on your own for magnesium fluoride this is the formula let me just take this off so for magnesium fluoride is mgf2 that means we have like two fluorine atoms here your fluorine atoms have seven outermost because it's in group seven. The second fluorine atom would have seven. And your magnesium has 12. So that means it has two in the outermost shell because it's in group two. So one of these can be completely transferred here and this one completely transferred here. And you see that everything will be balanced. So that's how magnesium fluoride works. You can also have magnesium oxide. 
this is magnesium oxide MgO and then you can find it that your Mg here has two electrons outermost and your oxygen has six six so it needs two to complete it so the two just comes from here it's very interesting and that's how it works now as we round up I would just like to state some important things about this ionic bonding it operates in an electron cloud model so I'm going to write that here so you can write it down as well I would advise that as you're watching these videos you get a notebook okay and a pen because it will help you as you're writing things down you would remember them for ionic bonding it operates in an electron cloud model this is different from metallic bonding very soon we'll check out metallic bonding in the next videos and you'll find out that metallic bonding operates in an electron C model so C is different from cloud exactly right so it operates in an ele electron cloud model you have a cloud of positive and negative charges around so that's an electron cloud model it's different from the electron C which you have in metallic bonding but I need you to remember this then also the structure of your ionic bonding or your ionic compounds generally follows a giant lattice structure so that's another thing the structure is giant lattice very important these are exam question points giant lattice structure that's the structure we're dealing with here then um, your ionic compounds they are basically soluble because you can tell that they are polar for instance our sodium chloride it is obvious that sodium chloride is polar because of the difference in electronegativity if I have sodium chloride I would expect this to be posit partially positive and this partially negative so it is polar therefore it will be soluble in water or some other polar solvent okay so that's how that works yes so this is basically that about ironic bonding please try out more questions on ironic bonding try to draw them out and if you have a problem you can leave it in the comments and i'll check it out all right bye